Birmingham and to Gladiators the Challenge. Now, our series this year is divided into northern and southern heats. And the respective champions will go on to meet each other, of course, in our grand final later on. And the winners of the heats, well, there's some fantastic prizes lined up. And we haven't forgotten the runners-up because they're going to win a fantastic holiday in one of the most beautiful places in the world. Africa's Sun City, plus a thousand pounds. And that's just the runners up. And the winners, they're going to receive one of these beautiful four-wheel drive off-the-road family vehicles. Not bad at all. And of course, a little bit later on, we'll see the gladiators in action at their winter training camp at Cocoa Beach in Mauritius. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, here's something else to look forward to. Let's meet our female northern contenders. They are Michelle Kimberly and Mallory Davis. Fantastic. How are you feeling? Fine at the moment. At the moment, at the moment. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do and where you're from. I do modern pentathlon and I come from Evesham in Worcestershire. Yeah. Two people from Worcestershire. Yeah. Modern pentathlon differ from the old fashioned one. Well, it includes running, swimming, shooting, horse riding, and fencing. Oh, so you're a fit lady. I like to think so. <laughs> now, I understand you're going on to do some studying, surely. At uh, Cambridge University, being a PE student. Oh, are you looking forward to that? Yeah, very much so. Are you looking forward to tonight? Oh, yes. Oh, well, we'll let you get ready for your first event. Michelle Kimberley. <laughs> okay, Mary, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from a rural village in southwest Wales called Canwyll Elbed. So, all of your supporters out there, I can hear them all, they've all come down from Wales tonight. Yeah, they travelled a long way to support me, so I'm going to really give it my best shot. OK, and what do you do for a living? I'm a police constable. Oh, and are they all here? They're not all here, but most of them. And as you can see, they've got their helmets on. And what do you do in your spare time? Um, in my spare time, I do some music, play the piano and sing in a choir. And how do you think you're going to do today? Well, I feel pretty confident. I'm going to give it my best, and I think I'm going to do well. Well, I've got to warn you, there's no choirs and there's no music. Off you go, get yourself ready. Let's hear it for Mallory Davis. And now it's time to meet tonight's male northern contenders. They are Johnny Alcock and Andy Morley. What a fabulous name. Oh, it's, it's a good genetic name. I think. <laughs> it certainly is. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do and where you're uh, from. I'm a small black collie dog from the Shetland Islands and uh, I round sheep for a living. This man, I have to tell you, I mean, the biggest threat to the gladiators is his unpredictability. What are you like? Tell us really what you do and where you're from. I'm really a quantity surveyor from Hartlepool. Oh. <laughs> Uh, well, two of them and the rest are all hired. <laughs> right, you've paid them, I should think so too. How do you think you're going to get on against the gladiators? Yeah, uh, do all right, you know. I'm pretty, pretty keen. <laughs> you're certainly keen and you've got the gift of the gab, so we'll look forward to chatting to you later on. Let's hear it for Johnny Orcock. <laughs> OK, Andy, where are you from firstly? I'm from Puddersfield in West Yorkshire. OK, wow. Tonight, uh, I think there, there, there. It's full. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you that it is full by the noise. And what do you do for a living? I'm a builder. Um, we've got, a, we've got our own family business. It's a family business, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure they're all here tonight. Who have you got here? Family? Yeah. I've got my wife and my daughter Olivia. And how do you think you're going to do today? I'm confident. Um, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Off you go, Andy. Get yourself ready. Andy Morley. Well, the girls are ready for their first event, so let the games begin. And on the blue, it's Mallory! And using the red ball, it's Michelle! And those five bars 
baskets are going to be guarded by Nightshade, Vogue and Lightning! Over to John Anderson. The Pendles, ready! Get it on and get him in. And traffic policewoman Maleri cops it from Nightshade. Fitness instructor Michelle also fails to score. Michelle grabs her ball, escapes the Nightshade. That doesn't happen very often. Send the basket, three points. Loads up for another raid on the baskets. Both marks are wide, out of bounds. Nightshade with the tackle there. Maleri still manages to post a pair. Michelle looking to be the better of the balls in this event. Bo's going to get a grip. Pulls it down by the elastic. And Maleri deals with heavy traffic every day, but not quite like this. And she's the one who usually does the high-speed chasing. Light shades there, takes the law into her own hands, but Maleri fighting back, evades capture and steals another couple of points. Maleri leads 3-4. Michelle needs to get a grip now, starting with that red ball. Nightshade pushing wide, can't contain her. She's going for the centre. Lightning's dispelling dive, can't hold her. A second centre for Michelle. Time running down, Maleri needs to get back into the driving seat. Wrong foot's Nightshade, she's clear for the centre. Maleri Davis, a more run for herself in this event. Wins it in the final seconds. And there's the sound of the hooter signifying the end of the 60 at a largely free scoring time. The contenders open their account in spectacular style. Glad's not as sharp as they'd liked. Michelle with plenty of space to score her centre basket there. How did you find it? Uh, good fun. Very tiring. I loved it. <laughs> Is it harder than what it looks on television? Definitely. You have one minute to give it everything. And that's what I did. You certainly did. Michelle? Well done. Thank you very much, I saw you kept sneaking off the centre pod. Yeah, I was pleased about that. Let's find out how many points you scored. Let's call in John Anderson. Johnny, give us the scores. Six points, seven points. Six, seven points. Well done, girls. After a rummage around the baskets, Michelle six, Maleri seven, with five events to go. Back to facts. You've seen the ladies, now let's see the men. On the blue, it's Andy. Rhino, Hunter and Ace! Over to John Anderson. Contendos, ready! Gladiators, ready! Three, two, one! Let's play ball! Bulldozes Andy the Builder. Oh, and Ace comes down on Johnny like a ton of bricks. Andy in blue, back to the hot for another load, looking to mix it with Ace. Oh, another demolition job. Johnny looking to be good, but the Rhino's got other ideas. Big boys, these three gladiators. They were born when meat was cheap. Andy again, and Rhino muscles in to mark him out. Johnny on the wing, shows he can outpace the Ace and the Hunter. Two perfect points. Oh, Rhino's on his case, lets him slip. Johnny on the three. Five points in as many seconds. This survey is all about quantity and quality. Explosive action from Johnny. Hunter's there to chastise him severely this time. Johnny out of bounds, but not out of breath. Looking to get back into the fray. While Andy needs to get into the points. Has he got a card up his sleeve? If he has, the ace trumps it. Johnny trying to outrun Rhino. And that's a rare sight in reality. A Hunter and a Rhino working together. Andy back in the ballpark. Once again, the ace is a king. Time slipping away, along with a chance of Andy scoring. Johnny with a real eye-opening powerball performance, looking for more, but John Anderson blows the hooter. That was a cracker. And the crowd rise to the occasion. Well, here's a piece of powerball history. On one run, Johnny beats all three gladiators to pop the points. So after one event, Johnny blasts up to five, and he's still to score. Well, here we are on this beautiful golf course at Coco Beach. Now, golf is not only a great way to help tone your muscles up, but it's a great way to help you relax and unwind. Oh, I love 
love relaxing. Will you teach me how to play? Oh, of course I will. Yeah, well, give us your bat then. It's not a bat. Well, you stick. It's not a stick. Well, what is it? It's a club. Oh, a club. I love hey, a club. You get serious and I won't teach you. Well. Now, come on, address the ball. Great legs. Good shoulders. Yeah, it's a super grip. Yeah? You're a natural you. You're going to do well. Let me see you hit the ball really hard. Hard? Yeah, really hard. Give it a good shot. No, 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 stop! What? I think we should start again. I thought you said this was going to be relaxing. Year's new gladiators, it's Rio! The crowd shout Rio bravo because she stands 1 meter 87 tall and weighs in at 83 kilos, and that includes her dimples. Fitness trainer Michelle will find herself with a physical shortfall of 20 centimeters and 20 kilos up on that sumo platform. Three, two, one! Remember, the object of the exercise is to push the gladiator from the platform within 30 seconds to score 10 points. Or hang on grimly for the time up to pick up five. No one likes getting the push, least of all when Rio's doing the pushing. Michelle putting her back into it, but Rio's giving her the runaround. Michelle stumbles. Can the Rio give her the hebo? Rio's really got the swing of this, but is Michelle a pushover? Oh, yes, she's gone. And with only three seconds left on the clock. Rio digs her heels in, Michelle teeters on the brink and suddenly finds herself balled out. Next up on Sumo Ball, it's Mallory! And she's going to be facing Rebel! Well, Mallory, of course, the latest in a line of successful contenders from the police service. Uh, PC Paul Field and DC Mandy Beecher, they did well in their previous shows of Gladiators. Um, so it shows that being in the police force does help and I think that is because it demands a certain amount of confidence and also the job promotes fitness. Three, two, one. She'll need fitness and confidence for this confrontation but already Mallory finds herself on the brink. Rebel working that ball like a centrifuge. Now Mallory's in serious trouble and she takes flight, swings off the platform and out of the points, robbed by the Rebel. A dad glad taking it out on the Dragon and Rebel orchestrating the crowd. In the replay we can see that Rebel certainly got the sumo ball sussed. Those clean sheets from the new girl glads means that the scores remain unchanged at 6-7. So now we move into the men's event with Johnny Trojan action man divides his time these days between London and Los Angeles. Stands an impressive 1 meter 87 tall and weighs in at 98 kilos. Whereas Johnny, who heralds from Hartlepool, may be marginally taller but is 21 kilos lighter. Three, two, one. Johnny anticipates the whistle a little there, but he's certainly putting his back into it. On the other side, the gladiator really is working like a Trojan. There's pushing and pulling and all sorts going on up there. Johnny giving it plenty with back and legs there. The ball weighs 75 kilos. Johnny's on the edge. Somehow manages to recover there. Look at that effort. Trojan using the shoulder shot technique, but Johnny's come marching home again here. Looks like he's going to hold off the Trojan for a five-pointer. Trojan's giving it everything. Dancing Johnny round that platform, using it like a ballroom. That's the end of the dance. And Johnny's points are in the pot. There's the family and the T-shirt safely naming them. Oh, Johnny. What goes on up there? Oh, bag of laughs up there, that now. Oh, I've been practicing the big back pudding in the front living room. In a pair of old pants. <laughs> what, what are you like? You must be delighted. You picked up five points. Oh, fantastic. I'm running out of quarter, but I'm happy. He was a tough cookie. He was. He was spinning me around like a merry-go-round up there. Um, different tactics. It wasn't like brute force. He did well to do it, man. We'll play. Yeah. You lived up to your name as action, man. Let's hear it for Trojan and for Johnny. Next up 
Apple Sumo Ball, it's Andrew. And unfortunately for him, he's facing the Wolfman. Over to Johnny Anderson. Contender, ready! The builder from Brockholz knows the wolf will be no pushover. This new event, a test of technique as well as power. Andy one-handed, that's allowed, but he's got to keep a grip on that handle. The energy reserves expended on this apparatus are incredible. Wolf sticking his claws in, gritting his teeth. Oh, and Andy pulling a rather funny face as well there. From his point of view, this is not so much sumo ball as dances with wolves. Time running down, and it looks like Andy's going down. Can he hang on? Oh, he's on the run there, yes! He's got it, builds a five-point foundation for his scoreline, and he's out of there. And he was on the brink of defeat with seconds to go, a real cliffhanger, and he nearly went over a couple of times, but somehow managed to stay on the ball and the platform and get himself on the scoreboard. Talking of which, after two events, Johnny moves up to ten, and he to five. just around the corner so join us after the break here on gladiators first up on the pendulum it's michelle and she's going to be facing one of this season's new gladiators rebel over to john both being deafened, they have to cope with being swung from pillar to post. Both girls heading due north. Rebel always puts in a rousing performance, determined to deny Michelle the point, and it looks as though she's got the measure of Michelle. Rebel certainly got the contender in her sights. Michelle responds, but this gladiator is a Rebel with a cause. The family edge are on. Rebel's got to snatch that pink flag from Michelle's back. Michelle's got to evade capture for 40 seconds if she's to clock up five points. And Rebel makes a grab but fails to flag her down. There's Michelle's brother James, the dad Bill, and mum Celia. Michelle only just out of harm's way, but it looks like she's got her five points. Oh! And it looks like Rebel's got her flag. 42.2, just under the wire. Great effort from both girls. And dad's pleased with that. Well done, Michelle! Go! Well, Rebel's reactions are amazing. Blink and you'll miss it, but Rebel didn't. It's Mallory! And she's going to be facing Vogue! And looking at the facts and figures, the vivacious Vogue stands 1 metre 67 tall, weighs in at 63 kilos, whereas the David Dynamo's rap sheet finds her 3 centimetres taller and 3 kilos heavier. Three, two. Wow. There's five points for hanging on for 40 seconds or a maximum 10 for evading capture for the four minutes and Vogue going up for a better view. No, there's nothing wrong with that view either. Mallory looks to be heading northwards too, but she's no idea where Vogue may be. Vogue mooching about and Mallory seen up. The family are on their feet now. There's a change. The people giving the traffic cop corrections. And it looks like Vogue's right above her. Mallory moving downwards into her left. Like the Gladiators Golf Tournament. It's all about those terrible swings. There's brother Mark, sister-in-law Klinos, and nephew Sean. Vogue working hard, but this is one event where the gladiators do want to be seen flagging. That's to say, waving the contender's flag in the air. Vogue's in a position to strike, but Mallory's clocked up the five points now. Can she hang on to that pendulum for the full minute and net her ten? Mallory's mum, Merle, mortified, but the clock's ticking down, and Mallory must be on for a maximum. Vogue tantalizingly close and Mallory trying to move out of harm's way oh she's gone with just 0.7 of a second left on the clock the final five slipped through her fingers how cool a result for Vogue though her relentless pressure forced the error with two events to go Michelle moves up to 11 and Mallory to 12 so we're now moving into the men's event 
with good old Johnny Alcock. And he's going to be facing Hunter. Earlier, Johnny told me how he hopes to cope with his adoring audience. I've performed in front of a crowd before at athletics meets, but never in front of 7,500 people who are all focusing mainly on me. I'm just hoping that a, a huge adrenaline rush will give me the edge. But apart from that, I think I'm quite happy. <laughs> Three, two, one! In the past, Hunter has proved to be relentless in his pursuit of contenders on this pendulum. He's fast, furious and phenomenal. Johnny's job takes him to building sites. Next time he sees the demolition ball swing in, he'll know how it feels. Hunter having a look over the horizon. Hard to tell if the family are either giving directions to Johnny or making gestures at Hunter. Hunter certainly looks to be on Johnny's case here, almost within striking distance. And Johnny just keeping the Hunter at bay. The speed of both boys on that pendulum is incredible. But the Hunter is haunting Johnny constantly, and he can't afford to make a mistake. Oh, he's made one! The Hunter harassed and hurried, and for Johnny it all went rotten. Well, they're impressed. He's not. It's the pressure from the Gladiator which forces Johnny into that error, drops off the pendulum and out of the points. Next up in the men's event, it's Andrew. And he's going to be facing one of our new Gladiators, Ace. The ace in the pack is a real man mountain, stands 1 metre 85 tall and scales in at a hefty 102 kilos. Compare that with the body of the builder, Andy Morley, and you'll see Andy's about 3 centimetres shorter but around 24 kilos lighter. Three, two, one. That vicious vacuum is the sound of the air brakes releasing the vast 5 metre diameter pendulum. First competition out in Grace on this particular piece of apparatus. And he's used to heights and scrambling up scaffolding, but it's never been swinging about like this before. And his wife Emma giving him some directions. And Andrew, well, he's saying, speak up, I can't hear you above all this noise. Well, I would have thought he could hear his sister, though. No wonder her name's Gail, Gail Force. Andy having a look around. And that's what Ace is doing, too. Hello, Ace has seen him. Has Andy seen Ace? Oh, he has now. Landy scored five points, now it's all about hanging on for the final 20 seconds. Ace aiming to axe Andy, but first he's got to get him within arm's length. Andy with a little more urgency in his movements now, knows the maximum is within his grasp. Everyone urging Andy on. Time usually goes by quickly when you're having fun, but Andy would dispute that at the moment. Looks like he's pulled his ten, though. And Andy is ecstatic. So's his team coach. And the family. Wife Emma there with baby Olivia and his dead lines. I think they all enjoyed that. Well, after three events, Johnny moves to 10, but Andrew swings into the lead and 15. The catamaran is a double hold yacht. It's designed for stability and speed. Safety is one of the most important things aboard a catamaran. That's why we're all wearing our life jackets. Well, because of our huge bulk and size, I'm surprised they found any yeah, jackets to fit us. That's right. Now, this reminds me of that other great Saturday night ITV show. What, you mean Baywatch? No, no Man Oh Man! Shots. So, moving on into our next event. And up on their platforms, getting ready to swing shot, is Michelle. On tenders, ready! Ladies, ready! Three, two, one! First swing shot of the new season. Mallory leaps into action. It's raining balls up there, but the girls bring back nothing to the bank. Lightning returns to base safely, but Mallory's struggling with her recoil. Michelle needs a helping hand as well. Those slow turnarounds are robbing the girls of valuable scoring seconds. Michelle swings out. We'll meet in the middle. And the gladiators make sure the girls come away empty-handed. 
better recovery from Mellory. Could have done with some lessons from the flying squad. Swings down. Swings up. Oh, and nothing to show for it that time either. A reminder, yellow balls score one point apiece, the blues two and the reds three. I suppose Mellory's more used to twos and blues on her blue star. Michelle's back to prime herself again. It's the balls you need in the basket, Mich, not yourself. Down again and up again and nothing again. Marked out by Lightning. Heptathlete Michel not happy with his discipline. Mallory again needs to score, yes. He pulls a yellow. Can she get it in the basket to make it count? Oh, no. Time up, a disappointing swing shot for both girls. If you can't get the knack, then the points you will lack, as my old grandfather used to say. How he knew about swing shot in 1927, we'll never know. Anyway, and Lightning struck more than once in that event, though here we see Mallory grab a yellow, but all to no avail. Once again, her recovery let her down and kept her out of the points. With one event left, just a single point still separates them. It's time for the men. And on his platform, it's Johnny! And on the other side, it's Andrew! And they're going to be facing the Cobra, and there's only one, the Saracen! Over to John Anderson. Contenders, Dummy from Andy there, swings out. Oh, and it pays off. Two for a blue, thank you. Fast gets his booty. Yes, very fast turnaround. Back for another freebie. Oh, it's two more. Superb swinging from Andy. Two in the basket, four on the board. And Johnny's there. And Saracen, the big man, prevents him from scrumping a scoring colour. And Johnny recoils very quickly. Back for more, down and up. Gets to the cylinder early. Oh, the yellow slips from his grip. He recoils as Andy leaps off. Up again. Plucks a yellow. Neither Saracen nor Cobra are having a good swing tonight. Andy registers his points. Turns again to add to his collection. Bounces down. Oh, it's a two-hander. Two blues, four points. His score's running up as the time's running down. And again, Johnny denied by Saracen. Johnny returns to base, but Andy's in the thick of it again. Comes away with a yellow. The cylinder nearly stripped. And what? Not on the floor. He's safely in his basket. Back for another raid. Nothing much left to pick, but Andy certainly proved himself to be one of the sultans of swing. Tremendous performance from Andy. You just can't keep him down. This is his event, all right. He's pleased. Unlike Johnny's so, family. Let's have a look at the scores. Unfortunately, Johnny, no points. Andrew raced ahead on 10 points. Looking at one of the highlights again, Andy swings down, lets go of his cord and snaffles what he can with both hands. Four for the price of one swing. After four events, Johnny stays on 10 while Andy storms up to 25. I told you to keep an eye on that one with the brown hair. They were like a national team, they were like pros. The one in the blue and white was cheating big time. Yeah, we're meant to be professional athletes. Yeah, but gladiators should never lose. Yeah, but they were not good, weren't they? They were good. Yeah, they were good. Yeah. Yeah. First up to run the gauntlet, it's Michelle! And tonight she's going to be facing Rio! Here's what Michelle thinks of this. Gauntlet is no fun at all. Just standing at the start line, facing those five gladiators. It's a horrible game. You're just going to get battered. And I think your aim is just to get through it and survive. Three, two, one. Michelle sets off on the road to hell. 30 seconds to run, 45 metres. Rio with the ramrod. Michelle through, though. This is Rebel with the power pack. Driving Michelle up the wall. Every which way but through. When push comes to shove, Rebel's a useful operator. Michelle driving hard now. She's into Nightshade. Tries to lower the boom. Oh, Michelle slipped through. Nightshade with a nudge. Oh, and Lightning thunders in. Knocks her back onto Nightshade territory. Nightshade rubs her up some more. Back into Lightning. Soaking up the punishment. Finally, it's Falcon. The time's running down. Falcon couldn't hold her. Well, did she do it? Michelle thinks she did. 
Michelle really came in for a serious drubbing from Rebel. She expected the worst and she got it. My goodness, Michelle. I was absolutely dreading that one, but I thought I've got to fight through and get to the end of that corner. Nothing was going to stop me. Well, let's bring in Andy Norgate and find out what your time was. Just over 30 seconds. Sorry, no points. No points. Oh, Michelle, all that hard work. And your last event as well. You're feeling all right? Yeah, disappointed with that. I bet you are. Go over and cool down and calm down. Let's hear it for Michelle. Great fight. Well, the rules are quite clear. The whole of the contender's body must be over the line before the 30 seconds has elapsed. Next up against the Dream Team, it's Mallory. This will be no Rio street party. The gladiator puts down the no-entry barrier. Rio forcing Mellory up the wall. But Mellory doubles back on her and gets a face full of rebel. Great spin from Mellory. Crashes into Nightshade. Somehow gives her the slip. Next comes the power pads of lightning. Again, she's free. Oh, the Falcon with a thunderous block. Takes the spin out of her step. Excellent gauntlet defense from Falcon, but can she hold her? Mellory tumbles with the line. No doubt about those five points. Dad's delighted. I don't know where you got all that from, but you were like a bull in a china shop. They're all very strong girls. Very hard, tough game. It's, uh, it's difficult for us because it's the last one and you're tired already. But I'm just thankful I got past you. You certainly did. Let's just find out what your time was. 25 seconds. Well, in that gauntlet, the excitement was blistering. Well, not for everyone. After five events, Michelle stays on 11 and Mellory moves up to 17. So we're now going into the men's event with Johnny. And tonight, he's going to be facing Rhino. Trojan. Saracen. Wolfman. And the rhino. Oh, and feels the rough edge of his ramrod. Spins to the left, but he's up and he's out of there. <laughs> well, that'll mean a restart at the beginning of Trojan Zone. Johnny's back in. In the replay, you can see Johnny evade the rhino, climb out of trouble, but Trojan's there with the up and under. 23 seconds remaining. Three, four, two, so Johnny faces off against Trojan, Ron foots him completely, there's only one Saracen and thank goodness for that, what a mauling, spins him away and into the wolf. Bundles the hound into touch, but Warrior's in there, barging him back. Oh, Wolf wants to have a piece of him, but the whistle's gone. Johnny's mum thinking, what has he got himself into? There's an infringement. Warrior moved into wall section, thus impeding the contender. The game will restart at the beginning of Warrior section. There are 14 seconds remaining. The referee penalising Warrior by adding three extra seconds to Johnny's time. In the replay, you can clearly see Warrior barging into wall sector. Three, two, Johnny against one. Warrior. And here we go again for the third time. Oh, look at that! Straight out. Johnny's brother finding this torture interminable. This must be a record. Here we go again. Johnny's problem is Warrior's almost as wide as the gauntlet itself. Warrior heaving and pushing, barging and shoving. It's a case of Johnny, remember me? That'll be another restart. Yes, Come on, people! Flash again, Warrior! There's a definite set pattern emerging here. Johnny steams into Warrior again. Trouble on his side, but time isn't. What a nightmare gauntlet for Johnny. Don't say it's done. Don't say it's done. 
know it. See, he won't get it past the daddy. This is the big daddy. It has to be said, that gauntlet will certainly not run without trouble. No. You look in pain. We know that even stuck a bit of a button. Yes, so I saw that. I mean, it was absolutely phenomenal, and the crowd were behind you all the way. You put up a terrific fight, but at the end of the day, there's more of them than there are of you. So I have got two of them. Whoa! Yes, just about. Um, I suppose this is your last event. Take a little breather now, because of course the lies ahead of you is the eliminator. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Let's hear it for Johnny. Next up against the Mean Machine, it's Andrew. I've met most of the gladiators now, and backstage just before the game to really try and psych you out. They've got a job to do, and basically it's to try and break your bones. Um, I've had a bit of a running with Warrior and I think there's a bit of a personality clash there. You know, I've got some and he's got none. Well, these contenders do like to meet trouble halfway, don't they? Three, two, one! And he fired up and into the Rhino! Rhino struggling to contain him and Trojan points him out in double quick time. It's another restart. He grapples past the rhino and gets a pair of pads in the chops for his trouble. There are 24 seconds remaining. Three, Come on, Trojan. two, Andy versus one. Trojan again. And Trojan's lunge is not effective. Next comes the Saracen Ramrod. Saracen holding him back, pinning him on the wall and hooking him up. Traps Andy between his arms and the rod. The ref not allowing that. You hooked him inside, not alone. He's got inside the pad. You hooked him inside, not alone. And his wife Emma there practicing her famous goldfish impression. There are 16 seconds remaining. Three, two, one. The face of courage there. Oh, superb. And he makes a dummy out of Wolf Warriors next. And this is going to be tough for his motto is they shall not pass. But Andy slipped him. He's there. A fabulous five points for Andy. And Big Danny didn't stop him. You managed to get past Rhino surprisingly quickly, and then the rest of them gave you trouble. Oh, they all gave me trouble. Five ugly fellas. <laughs> Ooh, a bit personal. Right. Don't tell me you enjoyed this. No. Well, listen, let's bring in Andy Norgate and find out what your time was. 24 seconds. Five points. Five points! <laughs> He's pleased with that, and so is his wife Emma and their baby daughter. After five events, Johnny's score remains the same, but Andy increases that lead still further. Well, there we have it, four heart-stopping gauntlet. Let's hope the Eliminators are just as exciting. Join us after the break here on Gladiators. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham, where it's Eliminator time in our Northern Heats. Now, this year, the overall winner of the fastest Eliminator time will receive a thousand pounds. To all our contenders. Now let's have a quick look at the scoreboards. Michelle's on 11 points, Mallory's on 17 points. That's a six point difference, giving Mallory a three second head start. Mallory, you will go on my first whistle. Michelle, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Mallory Davies, the traffic policewoman from Wales, starts her eliminator course for a place in the semi, followed by Michelle Kimberley, the fitness instructor from Isham. Next comes Bungie Mesh Mayhem of Spaghetti Junction. There are contenders still in there from previous shows who still can't get out. Mallory hacking her way through those tugging, taunting tendrils. Will she emerge with a lead intact? No, Michelle has caught her. Next is the rope climber. Michelle looks very strong. She heaves herself up and into the lead. She's going to hit the hand ladder first. Swings out over the canyon and Mallory joins her. It's close. Mallory's fans go crazy. And Mallory looks to be faster on the hand ladder. She'll be the first to leg it over the logs. Michelle's right with her. Cargo nets. Eliminators often lost here because of the bad time. 
Michelle's mum, dad and brother are with her every step of the way and believe me, it looks a lot tougher when you're looking up at it. Michelle climbs into the lead, the Welsh contingent willing on Mallory. Michelle's going to make it into the gantry first and if anything, looking to extend her lead. Hooks up and starts her slide with Mallory just completing her neckline. Now knees up and breaks, splash down. The Kimberley family on their feet, they can sense victory as Michelle enters the graveyard combination of the balance beams and the travelator. Michelle very nimble on the beam, Mallory's brother knows she needs a miracle. Michelle off the beam, poised for the travelator, digs in, powerful strike, she's there. Oh no she's not, lets it slip through her fingers like sand. But has she got enough, her family can only pray she has. Gerbs herself for another go, only this time Mallory's there with her, attacks it again. Oh she's running out of steam, here comes Mary. Oh, Michelle's lost it, and Mallory's lost it, I've lost it, but Michelle's hanging on like a fish out of water, but she'll never conquer the travelator in that position, Mallory's sucking the air into her lungs for another assault, Michelle's got to the top somehow, but it can't have been legal. Can you tell us what's the matter, what's happened, why are you blowing your whistle? Well, Michelle has unfortunately used her knees on the middle part of the travelator and has gained an advantage. entirely fair, both the contenders will start back at the beginning of the beam and will race from there. Well, her mum's not happy with that, but if we look at the replay, we can clearly see how Michelle used the static section of the apparatus for help and was lucky to escape disqualification. So, here we all are, at the beginning of the beams, once again ahead of them both, the notorious graveyard. Michelle's sister, Lisa, there, still shaking Three, her head. Two, one. They're off. We know that fitness instructor Michelle is fast on the beams, but can Mallory, the Welsh policewoman, there's lovely, catch her on the travelator. Michelle off the beam first, up the travelator. Mallory's flagging behind, Michelle's at the top, and she swings into the semis. And Mallory's just behind, a gallant runner-up. The family are gutted. Very well done. Not only did you have to run it once, of course, you both had to run it twice. And it was so close all along. Oh, I was determined to get it that second time. I didn't want to watch it go from out of my hands. I'm so happy. But up here, what was it doing to you about it being made to do it again? I just stayed focused on that rope at the top and I thought, that's my aim. Well, that certainly was your aim. And uh, because you were so excellent, you get one of these gorgeous little things. And now you get a chance to go see your hands all over again. Michelle Kimberly, well done. Well, Mary, sorry to see what happened, but it certainly kept everybody on the seat of their chairs. That was exciting. First of all, I'm going to give you your runners up medal. Talk us through that last little bit, because it was a little bit confusing. Well, I, I was glad of a second chance, in a way. And I really did think, I'm going to go for it. But I put, did my best. But it wasn't good enough. Fair play to Michelle. Well done. Good sport. Let's hear it from Mallory. Go and say hello to all your fans. Well done. Magnanimous Mallory, a credit to her family and her profession. Just pipped at the post in that rerun. And there's Michelle, helmet back on for some reason, enjoying the plaudits of her family, and a big hug for Mallory from her folks too. But we haven't finished with you yet. The men's eliminator is next, and he has a 20-point lead over Johnny, so he'll enjoy a 10-second head start. Oh, Johnny. It's going to be a case of go, Johnny, isn't it? Well, I'll be all right. 10 seconds isn't that much. It is. It's quite a lot, actually. No, 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 no. I'm lighter now, anyway. You certainly should be. You've sweated enough. And what about you, Andrew? Feeling very confident, I should imagine, with ten seconds in your pocket. Well, uh, I'm just going to concentrate what I'm doing and see how it goes. Well, I hope you both give us an exciting eliminator, whatever it takes. Best of luck to Johnny and Andrew. Andrew, you will go on my first whistle. Johnny, you will go on my second whistle. The builder certainly built himself up a decent enough lead for this eliminator. Fast and furious over the hurdles, and attacks the bungee mesh. Johnny's only hope is the tangle holds Andy back. Here he comes with it all to do, and he's certainly throwing himself into the action. Andy's already on the road climb, trying to maintain that lead, and you can just see Johnny negotiating Spaghetti Junction. Emma there with baby Olivia as her husband gets to work, pumping those arms and pedaling that handbike. Johnny emerges from the undergrowth, glad to see the back of that, but sorry he's still staring the back of Andy. And Andy, on the rollers, crosses those with a maximum of effort and minimum of fuss and takes on the net. The 
his mum, Adrian, can hardly bear to watch. And he scrambles to the top of the net. All he's got to do now is keep his head and keep going. Johnny sprints over the rollers. He knows there's plenty of work to be done. And he slips down the zip. In the background, Johnny's halfway up the net already. Splash down, great landing. Just the bounce beams and the travelator between him and a place in the semi-finals. Oh, look at this. Andy Morley motoring along the beam. A good, confident performance by the builder from Brockholes. Knows he can take his time to make sure. Digging in, up he comes. Oh, down he goes. Incredible. Another victim of the travelator's revenge. Emma can't believe it. Composing himself again. Johnny's on the beams and he attacks the travelator. This time, he's there. No, he's there. Cruelly drags away from victory again and he's bumped to lap. Johnny's fans know they're poising for the chance. Here he comes. Johnny Olcott from Arkley Pool. Has he got what it takes? Yes, he has. Snatches victory against all odds. How about that? The family are delirious. But spare a thought for poor old Andy. Determined to lay the ghost of his travel later once and for all. He's there. He knew he could do it. He knew he could do it. A remarkable display of character Johnny and courage. Johnny Olcott, what can I say? That was absolutely Deficit. I bet you couldn't believe your luck when he fell down the travelator. Uh, oh, it was lovely. <laughs> what? No offence to the guy, but oh, it was just, it was heaven sent that was. Oh. Well, this is all a bit of a nightmare for all of us because you're going to have to come back. Oh. With your peculiar sense of humour, you're going to come back and haunt us yet again. Let's hear it for Johnny Alcock. the most disappointed person. What happened? Can't tell you, John, I'm, I'm just gutted. You really were streaks ahead. Yeah. Um, all credit to Johnny. Kept tracking me. That's how it goes. This is the Eliminator. Always expect the unexpected. Here's your medal. Great performance. Let's hear it for Andy. That's gladiators for you. Blood, sweat and tears. To the victor, the spoils and the flowers. At the Alcock family reunion, there'll be celebrations in Hartlepool tonight. And everybody wants a piece of him. Though some things are more important than winning. In the fastest eliminated contest, Johnny's time of 1 minute 24.9 isn't enough to better the record currently held by Stephen Morn. Well, after four such exciting gauntlets, I really didn't think the Eliminators would be able to live up to that, but they completely superseded that. It was really nail-biting oh, stuff. Oh, yes, it was, but next week there's going to be more, so make sure you join us here on The Gladiators! See you then. Hold on! For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators.